So a little while ago, the YouTuber Red Falcon reached out to me asking if it would be possible for him to challenge my AI at Mario Kart Wii. Getting my AI to play against a human is something I've been wanting to do for absolutely ages, but I was still pretty scared since I knew it was going to be really tough. However, now I've created loads of Mario Kart AIs, I finally plucked up the courage and accepted the challenge. The terms of the challenge would be as follows. I would have 10 days to program and train the AI completely from scratch. The final battle would then use four tracks, two chosen by me and two chosen by Red Falcon, for which I decided to choose Yoshi Falls and Bowser's Castle, and he decided to choose the fan favourite Coconut Mall and of course Rainbow Road for the finale. During the final showdown, Red Falcon would have a total of one hour to try and beat the AI on all four tracks. To further up the ante beyond just my pride, we also decided to add some stakes for both of us on the challenge. If I lost, my punishment was I'd have to make an AI to play Wii Play's shooting range game. And if Red Falcon lost, he'd have to do a video trying to get around ChatGPT's restrictions and try and make it call him a loser. So with the stakes and terms for the challenge set, I knew this was going to be difficult. 10 days is not a crazy long amount of time to train an AI to play 4 different tracks, and that's even if they all work first time, which from my experience is not exactly likely. Also, the whole playing versus a human thing was completely new to me, so this was going to need to be different to anything I've made before. From the second we agreed on the challenge though, I knew I had no time to waste, so I immediately got started. The method my AI is going to be using is called Deep Reinforcement Learning, which effectively uses trial and error over millions of attempts to slowly but surely learn how to complete a task. In our case, we're going to let the AI control a bunch of Mario Kart races and play many, many games. Red Falcon was also kind enough to create my AI its very own character, so huge style points on that front. Just to clarify, this character is just normal Funky Kong on the Flame Runner, but with a much cooler look. Since I needed humans to actually be able to play against the AI, I had to set the game to split screen mode, so that once the 10 days of training were over, the second player could come alive under human command. Red Falcon requested that he could use this rather interesting me on the Mac bike, so you know, to each their own. As for getting our AI to learn, we're going to need to give it some guidance, as we don't just want it to wander around aimlessly. This is where rewards come in. After every single action the AI takes, we're going to give it a reward telling it how well it's doing. From there, the AI's only goal is to predict how much reward taking any given action will provide. Once it can predict these rewards well, it can simply choose the action with the most reward, hopefully resulting in actions which show us some good driving. So far in this video, I've kept saying the AI, but I haven't really explained what it is. The thing that we'll be learning to predict these rewards is a neural network, which is a very, very rough approximation of how a human brain works. Long story short, it takes in the game's previous four images and then spits out predictions for each of the different actions of how much reward it thinks it will get. Explaining the complete architecture of the neural network is way beyond the scope of this video. But if you're a nerd who's into this stuff, this is it briefly. The network uses three blocks of convolutional residual layers, then followed by two fully connected layers with noise injected to force the AI to take exploratory actions, and then predicts the entire distribution of rewards it thinks it will get using something called a quantile function. Back to talking in regular human language, here you can see the type of images the AI receives, and you may have noticed they were to say the least, kind of awful. They were only black and white, absolutely tiny and horribly distorted. I have to make the images as small and colourless as I can, as the more information the AI takes in, the bigger the neural network will have to be. Bigger networks will really strain my computers, making the training process a whole lot slower, and it's critical that I can train the AI for as many frames as possible if I want to get the win. If you are wondering what kind of computers I'm using for this challenge, I'm simply using two high-end desktop PCs. In the context of AI, this is pretty limited, but until Google want to hook me up with one of their data centers, it's the best I've got. Now that you've got a rough idea what's going on, for the rest of the video you'll see the AI slowly train up from knowing absolutely nothing to the very end where it can hopefully master the game. 
all whilst I continue to try and explain roughly how this thing works. Earlier in the video, I mentioned I needed to give the AI some rewards to guide its behaviour. This sounds simple enough. Driving is good, crashing bad, right? Well, sadly it's not even in the same zip code as being that simple. In fact, getting the rewards right in reinforcement learning is like a dark magic infused art, where even slight mistakes leave the AI not learning anything, or even worse, learning the wrong things. The system I used for this AI was complex enough to make calculus seem simple, but anyway, here goes nothing. There are 20 checkpoints on each lab, each time you pass one, you get some reward. You get given a reward for what position you're in, first giving the most obviously. You get a massive reward for finishing the race, with higher placements giving more reward. You get a little bonus if you could do a mini turbo after your drift. Now onto the negative rewards, or in human language, punishment. If your speed drops too low for too long, you get a slap in the face, and you get sent back to the start. If you start going in the wrong direction and Lakitu pops up, you get an even bigger slap in the face, and you get sent back to the start, basically making Lakitu the AI's Grim Reaper. If you start a drift but don't complete it, you get a little punishment. If you press the item button but you don't have an item, you get a smaller punishment. If you get hit by an item, you get a moderately sized flick in the ear. If you want to turn while wheeling or hop just to adjust your direction, that's okay. But if you abuse it, you get an electric shock to the nether region. Lastly, if your speed is below a certain threshold, you get repeated tiny slaps in the face until you get back up to a decent speed. A bit like a really aggressive alarm clock. Yeah, I'm done now. That's it for the rewards. However, the hardest part of all of it was deciding how much weight to give all of these things. At the end of the day, I just plucked numbers out of thin air thought about them for a bit, and prayed they worked. Comforting, isn't it? The way I actually get the information to provide the AI with these rewards is by reading the Wii emulator's memory. I had to manually track down these memory addresses for each track, however luckily there are some good tools out there for finding them, so it didn't take too long. On screen now, you can see me driving around the track, and some of the memory addresses with their given values as I drive. After playing the game for years, this is really interesting to me since most of this stuff isn't actually shown in the game anywhere, so it's nice to see how the stuff works under the hood. Rewards are all great, but in order for the AI to actually interact with Mario Kart, it needs some actions it can choose. After some thought, I came up with a total of 10 actions, which should allow the AI to do most of what human players typically do. All in all, we've got wheeling in a straight line, turning a little while wheeling, drifting at a bunch of different angles, directions, and durations, and lastly using its item. As you've probably noticed, in the top left you can see how much reward the AI thinks it's going to get for doing each of these actions, and the action that is actually taken is the one that has the highest prediction. If you want to know more about how this AI works, or just like what I do here, be sure to check out my other videos as I've created a bunch of AIs to play a whole load of different games, all the way from Super Mario Galaxy to Mortal Kombat. Now that we've pretty much covered how the AI works, let's get into some final results of how it actually did. So even though I used the same AI learning algorithm for all of these tracks, it was individually trained for each one, as I knew this would give far better performance. Given I had 10 days and two computers, I decided to train the AI on Coconut Moor and Bowser's Castle each for five days on my first computer, but then would train the Yoshi Falls AI for four days, and the Rainbow Road AI for 6 days on my second computer. Since those tracks were so far apart in complexity, I thought Yoshi Falls probably wouldn't really need the extra day, and I also thought it would be really cool to make Rainbow Road the kind of final boss for Red Falcon. I'm now going to show the final progress graphs for all of the AIs. Here you can see how the different AIs average reward look while training against real human time. The AIs made good progress on all of the tracks, slowly increasing their reward until they were consistently getting first place in every single race. After this, the reward kind of flattened off. However, reinforcement learning actually includes a value called the discount rate, which makes AI value rewards more now than rewards later on, encouraging the AI to get as much reward as quickly as possible. So even though the reward graph starts to flatten off, throughout the whole time the AI was training, it was getting faster and faster at driving. This was particularly evident on Yoshi Falls, where due to how short the track is, the AI quickly got to the point of trying to optimize its lines rather than just trying to get first place. Just to be clear, the time you see on the graph is real human time, not the total amount of time that AI played Mario Kart for. 
For all of the different trading processes, in order to massively speed up the amount of trading it could do over 10 days, the AI played on four instances of Mario Kart simultaneously. Furthermore, each of the instances were running at about 150% of normal speed, allowing the AI to play an absurd total number of games. To save you doing the maths, the AI played around 90 frames per second on four different emulators, with 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day, for 10 days on two different computers, totaling a whopping 62 million frames, which at the game's normal frame rate totals 120 days of Mario Kart Wii time. Anyway, I know what you've all been waiting for, so here are some clips of me playing vs the AI. I'm not going to show off too much, since I'm not the competitor that this AI was born to challenge, and plus, I felt a bit like an imposter playing using Red Falcon's me. If you can't tell by now, the AI was crazy skilled at Yoshi Falls, taking way better lines than I could ever dream of taking. After playing against it a whole bunch, I got absolutely pummeled, barely standing a chance. Coconut Mall's AI performed pretty strongly, but wasn't quite as optimised as the Yoshi Falls version, so I still did have a bit of a chance. On the more complicated tracks, the AI acted mostly normally, but still definitely had some areas of lacking knowledge, since sometimes it just didn't really know what to do. The Bowser's Castle AI was probably the worst of all of them sadly, as the track was pretty complicated for the 5 days it had to learn. The AI had way more holes in its knowledge on this track than the others, meaning it wasn't too difficult to get a win. Don't get me wrong though, the AI still put up a good decent fight, especially considering the CPUs in this game were already on the hardest difficulty so it was pretty difficult for regular human players. Lastly, the Rainbow Road AI truly lived up to the final boss I had hoped to create, as this thing with the full 6 days of training was an absolute monster, and strongly confirmed that biological creatures such as myself are no match for its silicon might. While overall this AI performed pretty well, after finishing it I had so many ideas about how it could be improved, even just a tweak on the reward function could have given a way better performance. For example, you probably noticed that the AI almost never used its items, since the punishment for pressing the item key without having an item was way too harsh, scaring the AI off of ever pressing it. Beyond that, I also really messed up an important part of the AI's neural network, so I'm convinced that very soon with a few tweaks, we may have an AI that even the best players in the world are unable to compete with. So be sure to stick around on the channel because believe me, that video is coming soon. We got it as well. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be close. Anyway, be sure to check out Red Falcon's video on him racing against the AI, as I promise it was an absolute fight to the bitter end that you won't want to miss. If you like what I do here, it would be awesome if you could check out some of my other videos, and be sure to give this one a like and subscribe. I hope this video made your day just a little bit better and I hope to see you again in the next one.